There will be a time where people will not need a driver's license or know how to drive a train, conduct a surgery, be able to clean or teach, run a register. In the near future, robots will have a clear advantage versus the average human. According to the website Gizmodo, robots are already superior when it comes to mass production, expendability, immunity from psychological factors, the list goes on. Everything that the human being excels in, the robot could eventually surpass. Who needs a human anyway when you could have a machine? Pretty scary, right? Well, I'm not gonna get ahead of myself. Let's step back to today. Welcome to the 21st century. Although not as profound or dark as the scenario I just gave you, we can still see some changes leading toward this type of future. Robots are becoming smarter, more being able to adapt more, wages are dropping. It really makes us think about what the future will look like, not only for humans, but for robots and the workplace in general. I like to take the time to explore some of these opportunities, some of these possibilities. But first, a little story. Last summer, I spent my vacation going to Japan. I had the time of my life going across different cities and learning what this new culture was. It was great. While I was there, one day as I was heading out with my parents, I noticed something interesting. At the front doors, there was a machine a robot, if you will, about as tall as my waist. And it was giving out information about services, architecture, basic stuff about the hotel. Simple enough. And although I could have easily just taken my picture and started bragging to my friends about how I saw a real life robot in Japan, I took it a step further. And I thought to myself, a human could have been here. A human could have had this job. The novelty and the ingenuity of new technology often overshadows its consequences. And of course, this isn't just the only type of robot. It isn't just the animatronics that we see at Disney. Robots can take all different shapes and sizes. According to Merriam-Webster, a robot is a machine that can perform various complex tasks. With this in mind, we should see robots as machines with various functions in our environment. A couple of examples include mail being delivered by drones, or telemarketing directing where you need to go for your call. I want you to keep a couple of these examples in mind as I continue on in my speech. In the meantime, I want you to imagine this. Imagine you're at your manufacturing company. You're feeling marvelous because today, it's paycheck day. Today you get that sweet, sweet, well-deserved cash. You walk forward, shake your boss's hand, and almost close your eyes, ready to feel that smooth piece of paper touch your waiting hand. Can you feel it? Well, not anymore, because you just got fired. Congrats. I'm sure you're thinking to yourself, what did I do? Like, did I do something wrong? Did I forget something? But then it dawns on you. Why am I being replaced by a robot? This is what happened with Foxconn, a huge technological manufacturing company that works with giant businesses such as Apple or Samsung. According to BBC News, one of these factories had reduced employee strength from 110,000 to 50,000, thanks to robot introduction. Imagine hearing the same story I just told you, but 60,000 times. And this, as we should be aware, is not the only place this is happening. Jobs are being replaced in all fields of work. Go into your nearest Publix, for example, and you'll use a kiosk to pay for your groceries. A fast food restaurant, a touchscreen menu. Even driving down the road, and there's a chance to see a self-driving car. Humans used to be here. So, instead of whining about how your old job is being replaced by a robot, how about we adapt and try something new instead? Dr. Jing Bing Zhang, a world-leading expert on the commercial application of robotics technology, believes that in order to adapt to this change, we just have to retrain ourselves. So, with that being said, what other jobs can we focus on? Well, I was looking for the National Public Radio Archives, NPR, and in it, there was an article called, Will Your Job Be Done by a Machine? Lucky me. 
In this article, there was a drop-down menu that told you the percent chance in which your job would be replaced by robots in the next 20 years. Now, I get it, these are predictions. We can't be 100% accurate on which jobs are given to robots and which ones to humans, but it's nice to have something to compare to. As I was looking across the list, I noticed a couple of trends between the jobs that were least likely to be given to robots. Let me give you a couple of examples. One, engineers. These are people who design, create, and manage new ideas. Robots, they can't really think creatively like this. It's why mechanical engineers have a 1.1% chance of being replaced, followed by chemical and aerospace engineers with a 1.7% chance. Two, community and social services. These are people whose jobs are simply put to help people. It's a huge weakness of robots, as their logarithms, their AI, can't really think of ways to help people by itself. It needs help. This is why clergies have less than a 1% chance of being replaced. In fact, the lowest number that I found out of the whole list was mental health and substance abuse social workers, with a 0.3% chance. Three, jobs in which we must make decisions based on emotions. The thalamus is the decision-making part of our brain, and allows us to decide which choice is the better option to take. Although robots can go through hundreds upon thousands of different choices faster than we can, we'll never attach emotion. I'm not only the one making the decision, but also the one being affected by it. Let's imagine for a second that you are a doctor, and you know your patient is going to die. Seeing the patient's family right before your very eyes, how do you come to a consensus on where not to pull the plug? If a normal doctor would do this based on a balance between medical expertise and the family's opinions, how would a robot do this? If we get the skills and power to work these type of jobs, we almost never have to worry about robots taking them. So we've talked about robots and we've talked about humans. The only thing we can really do now is put them together. Have you guys ever seen iRobot? It's a crazy movie and not the most factual one to bring up, I'll give you that. But there's something I want to talk about. In the beginning, we see this relationship between robots and humans where the humans basically tell the robots what to do. This can range from any chore, job, whatever. And I do understand this movie, spoiler alert, ends with robots trying to fight the humans and taking over the world, and that's not what I'm here to talk about, thank God. Uh, what I want to focus on then is this early, early relationship between the two. We have to realize that these two can coexist. So while my first solution, it would be more like a race for a job, the second thing I'd like to offer is an equal relationship between the two. To really understand this, uh, more clearly, we can look at another relationship that we already have, humans and technology. These two have been working alongside each other for quite some time. Technology has expanded in ways that we tend to forget about in our daily lives. We wake up with alarms, go to school or home in automobiles, come home to a refreshing shower. These things were invented by man to help with us. As we draw nearer to the concept of super intelligent AI, we have to wonder if all this talk about robots taking over the world and humans becoming the minority is just paranoia. Could robots really take over the workforce? Is that even possible? There's no way to really predict this type of future. So instead of looking at that weird sci-fi battle of the earth possibility, let's look at the actual reason we made robots. Robots have been used to help us run our daily lives, just as different technologies have been invented to help with us. Robots in the workforce, likewise, are meant to help us in a grand scheme of things. That's why we invented such technologies, such things as robots. They're just another tool at our disposal. By working with these robots, we can achieve so many new things. Robots can do what we can't, just like humans can think what robots can't. With these two aspects in mind, the power of uniting these forces is limitless. I want you to take a moment and think of all the unanswered questions you have. It's a lot, I know. But from the tiniest of cells to the infinite cosmos of the universe. Take your time. If we could set aside this fear of robots taking over the workforce, 
And we can look at all the benefits that we now have. Robots are an asset, not a liability. And this is what the human race needs. It's how we advance forward. By ignoring this new phenomena, we are staying in the past. Now, let's move forward. So, in the end, I've given you my spiel on robots in the workforce, the future role of human beings, and how these two can interact. By the time I'm in my 30s or my 40s, I may be in the same, same situation. We all may be in the same situation, in different points of time, of course. Our own selves may not know what the future holds for us, but we do know how to adapt. I've given you a problem, as well as two different solutions, each with their own stories and possibilities. When super intelligent AI comes along, our focus is always providing the essentials for our families. That's why we see people doing such crazy jobs like fishing in the middle of the ocean or mining for coal in factories. Humans, they could never be replaced. And it is this dedication, this persistence, this clear focus on our goals that truly sets us apart from the average robot. Thank you.